Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Angela, I'm with ProFarm Group, and I'm pleased to welcome you to our webinar today on maximizing tomato and pepper yields with biologicals. My colleague here, Steve Bogash, is gonna be leading the majority of the webinar, and we're very pleased to have um, a guest, Scott Hoffman with Fermano's Food. I'll introduce them shortly, but wanted to remind you first that ProFarm Group is a publicly traded company and as with tr publicly traded companies, anything in this presentation is for is strictly for educational purposes only. Should you be interested in investing in our organization, we encourage you to do your own due diligence. So for our speakers, first, I'd like to introduce Steve Bogash, my colleague in the Northeast. Uh, he began his career as an owner operator of Greener Horizons, a garden center, nursery, greenhouse, and landscaping operation in Maryland. Before he moved on to work as a horticulture education educator and researcher for the Pennsylvania State University Cooperative Extension in State College, Pennsylvania. He worked in extension for nearly 20 years. And after retiring from extension service, he joined our organization and is based in the Northeast Mid-Atlantic area and serves as a field development and territory business manager. Uh, territory, Steve's territory runs from Southern Virginia to Caribou, Maine, and all the way over to the Western edge of Ohio. He oversees several university and private research company trials, as well as many on-farm demonstration trials for ProFarm Group. Steve and his wife, Roberta, live in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, where he is honing his carpentry skills, building wooden boats, and renovating their home um, that was built in 1933. So Steve always has some fun stories about his renovation projects. Steve, thanks for being on today. And I know you are very passionate about tomatoes. <laughs> so Steve will be sharing a lot of technical information about our products and how they work for tomatoes and peppers. Next, I'd like to introduce our guest speaker, Scott Hoffman. He's a field representative for Fermano Foods, and he has been with the organization that's based in Pennsylvania for 15 years. For those of you that aren't familiar with Fermano's, it's a family-owned food company that has been growing and processing tomatoes and many other foods, as I'm learning, for more than 100 years, since 1921. So the organization has a lot of experience in this area of growing tomatoes. Uh, Scott manages contracting, planting, crop maintenance, and harvesting operations throughout the Northern Pennsylvania area. He's also a member of the Pennsylvania Vegetable Growers Association and Market Research Board and serves as a grant evaluator for the organization. We're so pleased to have Scott join us today because he has considerable experience with our products and can speak firsthand to the results he's had with our biofungicides, Regalian Stargus, and our heat stress manager product, Haven. When not growing for Fermanos, Scott enjoys fishing and time with his family. So Scott, thanks again for being on and taking time out of your very busy schedule. Thank you for having us. All right, so a little overview of what we're gonna cover today. First, we'll tell you a little bit about ProFarm Group in case you're not familiar with it. And then we're gonna go over the common tomato and pepper diseases, including abiotic challenges. Uh, Steve is also gonna to touch on the hybrid biological synthetic uh, programs, which we call BioUnite at ProFarm, uh, and these, the way these tools solve disease challenges. Then he'll give an overview of common tomato and pepper insect and mite problems, and then finish with a hybrid uh, biological slash synthetic or the BioUnite programs to solve those insect challenges. We'll of course have Q&A at the end, but I really encourage you post your questions throughout uh, the webinar. We really try to, again, make it as interactive as possible, and we'll stop a couple times throughout the webinar to help answer questions. A little bit about ProFarm Group. So ProFarm Group uh, was created in July, 2022, when Marone Bio Innovations and BioSeries Crop Solutions merged. The result is the largest biological crop solution company in the world. Uh, our parent company, BioSeries Crop Solutions, is based down in South America. 
ProFarm Group is the North American arm that specializes in both specialty and row crops. And then we have a sister company, Rhizobacter, which some of you may be familiar with. They're a leader in crop protection and inoculants in South America. And they have also, um, that name is also carried through throughout our EMEA region or Europe and um, the Asia. So as I said, together, we created the largest biological crop solutions company in the world. And just a few stats, the organizations collectively have over 45 years of experience innovating in these different crop protection areas, crop protection, crop health, and crop nutrition. We're in over 45 countries. 75 million acres are planted with our, our seed treatment technology and 23% of the world's soybeans are treated with our inoculants. Here's just a brief overview of the North American portfolio. Um, as you can see, we have products for crop protection, crop health, and crop nutrition. And today we're really gonna hone in on a few products. On the left side of your screen under the fungicide plant health, you can see Regalia and Stargus. And then right next to that, you can see Haven for crop stress reduction. And then on the bottom under the insecticide and nematicide area, Steve is going to be touching on Venerate and Grandivo. Of course, if you have any questions about any other products you see here today, don't hesitate to reach out to us or to Steve specifically. We are grateful that you took time out of your busy day to join us and we like to say thank you. So we are going to be having some quiz questions throughout the webinar again in an effort to make this as interactive as possible. And um, the winners, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pose the question and then whoever answers the question uh, correctly, the first person to answer it correctly in the chat, um, they will receive one of these gifts. So what we're going to do is throughout the, the webinar, there'll be questions. You have to post your answer in the chat. And then um, Steve is going to put his email in the chat. So you can, if you are a winner, you'll just email Steve your address so he can send you the prizes. Okay. So just a little, little thank you for tuning in today. And today's gifts are knives to be specific. Great. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right, so with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Steve, who's going to explain a little bit more about ProFarm's relationship with Fermano Foods and working with Scott. And I believe Scott's gonna share some experience he's had working with our products. So take it away, Steve. There we go, should be unmuted, all right. So um, you guys, uh, you heard uh, the um, Angela's introduction of Scott. That's pretty much everything that you've got here. So we're going to keep on going. And um, this is a picture from this past growing season of some harvesting in one of Fermanagh fields, which is a great background for Scott and I to talk about what he's doing. So Scott, describe, I mean, I know you're in contracting season now, but I think what's more interesting in this webinar is what you actually do during the growing season. So walk us through your growing season and what you have to chase down. Well, it all starts with, uh, you know, right now we're actually beginning to look at putting seed in the greenhouse. Uh, and that's actually where we start with uh, util utilizing one of your products, the regalia. Um, drenching, drenching the uh, seedlings before they come out to the field has been a major asset to our program is getting that uh, six inch seedling uh, bolstered that cell, that so those cell walls really, really strengthened before they come out into the central Pennsylvania, our, uh, our lovely environment here sometimes can be really harsh and it just really helps with that assistance. And then uh, all the way through the season, I'm scouting, you know, once we plant, we scout and uh, use an IPM, you know, approach uh but the regalia end of it really really has to be put in early and often um we start like i said we, in, the, in the greenhouse and then the first two or three sprays when it comes to manzate coside manzate coppers and uh the the previous when i started 15 years ago we always had you know two or three fields that we always had a, a full vine decline uh effect and uh, since we've really tweaked the program 
of utilizing some of these SARs, this biological, this biological product. Um, I have not had that issue at all in the last probably six to seven years um, since we really tweaked our, our program. And we've had the high heat droughts. We've had the wet pools. This year we had another uh, not so nice incident with uh, the smog or the, the, the smoke coming down from, from Canada. Uh, we didn't have the heat units this year. Every year in, in the 15 years of doing this, none, none of them have been the same. Um, but we've had some major stressors. And, and I truly believe that the return on investment on the products that we're using is keeping my plant healthy and, uh, and, and bringing, bringing the plant the uh, quality product that they, that they need. That's 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 interesting, Scott. So um, you had touched on one of the things that I want to uh, underline in here, the tank mix that you had that you had kind of mentioned real quick. Um, I've looked at you've shown me a lot of your uh, uh, reports that you do for uh, pesticide applications. You had mentioned the uh, Manco Zeb or Manzate and Copper and and Regalia mix. So that's one of the premixes or the tank mixes that I recommend very strongly. How 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 big a part of your program is that? Oh, that's those are the first uh, two to three sprays, and Regalia is in there every single time. Um, now I, I believe the the rate is calling for a court. We're actually going out on a seven to ten, depending on how the weather is. And looking at the uh, incidence of rain and and the, and that kind of uh, plays into it, but uh, we're the first three sprays or so are definitely getting it in, and even farther out into a you know into a Tanos Quadrus, Revis Top you know Bravo, uh, and insecticides and stuff you know mixed depending on what we have. We had a we had two hundred acres this year this past year hit with hail, um, and we were able to harvest. 85 percent of those we had to leave one field go because it had fruit that was damaged by that and we couldn't clean it up but the 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 rescue mission that we used with regalia some jet ag and and i thought i was going to see some bacteria issues i mean it basically sh shredded the plants tremendously and we were able to go ahead and bring them back and we got a, about a 36 37 ton yield on something that we were we were really considering in our, in our team meeting about disking, disking them under because they look so bad. I wish I had a, I should have sent you some pictures of what it would have, but it was, it was obliterated. 68 acres were obliterated by, by this hail. And it was able to be brought back with no disease issues. And so that gets us to, uh, we weren't really going to focus on jet ag much here, but jet ag five is uh, uh, the pro farms peroxyacetic acid product. And um, Scott started using it. What I guess you've been about three years. You started using this product. Yeah, it's been about three. And um, largely as a rescue. Um, so you were talking about using it for hail, but I know in past years you've talked about other events where you saw things starting to break down, and that was the first direction you went. And you mentioned an unusual tank mix. Um, one of the concerns always with the peroxyacetic acid products like Jet Ag is what do you mix them with. And uh, so one of the first rules that everybody should know is you never mix them with any nutrients. The, the, there's too many metals. I mean, almost all the nutrients are some kind of a metal salt. And so you'll break down. But um, you had mentioned mixing it with regalia. And that's one of those tank mixes that we've proven works time and again and is really safe for sprayers and plants. How, how often are you applying that during the season? The uh, jet ag or the... Well, Jet Ag and Regalia together, because we were using that as a uh, um, uh, as a tank mixer, or at least I thought that was what I heard you say. I am I'm using that basically as a, like you said a rescue mission. When we had that injury, as a per, per, uh, <laughs> acetic acid, you know that that's I'm using it as a basically clean the wound, and then I cover the wound, and uh, and also when I see bacteria lesions on the leaves, I'll throw that in a little bit too. But with the early early usage of regalia, I have not been, that's our, our biggest issue is bacteria spot and speck and then an early blight. And since we've been using the regalia alone, you know, starting from greenhouse to the first four, four to five sprays, um, the bacteria issue has gone, you know, away. 
And I use the, like I said, the uh, the jet egg when we have a hail issue, um, high winds, and it pushes the plants over. We have an injury type situation that I need to clean something up before. Because a lot of our fields have had tomatoes on them since the 1950s and 60s and, and stuff. So we've inoculated that soil with, you know, soil borne pathogens. And we have a lot of, you know, stuff in those soils that we want to keep out of the, the you know, tomato plant. Uh, virgin soil is not, we don't have that many areas that we can go to. So we got to keep keep the, the plant as clean as we can. And like I said, the regalia starting from greenhouse. And then when we do get an incident where heavy rain splashed the, the plant with mud and dirt, we're going in there with uh, with, with, with jet ag to basically basically clean it like, like, a, like a wound. That's interesting because you had reminded, you just reminded me of something the last time you and I walked fields this past year. You were pointing out to me that when you look deep inside some of your plants, you could see some bacteria there. You could see the lesions there, but it wasn't moving. And that was exactly what you were looking for. You knew, you know, the inoculums there all the time. Yep. So that's the goal you're looking for. It's going to be there. Even some of the, even some of the seed varieties that we use are some of them are more prevalent to bacteria. And that's, there's where I really keep the, the eye on that disease for, you know, with the regalia and keep that even the regalia rate up higher than what, you know, on some of these other areas that I don't, you know, have as many years of tomatoes on. Sure. And we'll get into specific how to use regalia later on in this. I want to keep this going, Scott. We're going to shift gears for a second. Um, you're one of our early adopters for Haven and some of the demos that we've done. Um, and so um, where, how did you, why, why did you incorporate Haven into your programs? Haven's in my toolbox for, we, uh, I do about 950 acres of tomatoes. And we, we normally do about maybe 10%, 12% of those acres on dry ground, on non-irrigatable ground. And on a year that gets super hot and dry, where the stress gets too much, Haven has really uh, assisted with that stress and that abiotic stress in, in that plant to keep them going and actually give me a crop. Um, and that's where it's really, really helped us out. On, now this past year, we had a first, the first six weeks of planting was, was super dry. But then after that, we had rain every week. So every year has been a different thing. So Haven this past year, I didn't utilize as much, but I always have it in my my toolbox that on a, on a really hot, dry year, it allevi alleviates that stress, which brings on bacteria and some of those those diseases even harder. Yeah, I was, I was impressed by the difference. The field we did, I believe it was two years ago. Um, I was impressed by the difference in the haven side of the field versus the non-haven side. Everything else was was equal in there. Um, so one of the big questions we always try, one, one of the big selling points for our products is return on investment. And so I put this in my questions to you. Um, I know you're, the people you have to justify your budget to, return on investments, really important to them. We're, how, how do you feel about the return on investment on these products? I feel very strongly because uh, in, our, in our plant, in our processing plant, we have two types of, two types of tomatoes, a crusher or a peeler. And if I'm bringing peelers, I, I get paid better. So the better quality tomato, which can either go into a sauce or a whole peeled or a diced or whatever, it's better for me to get that peeler price. And with using utilizing these products, the tomatoes that we're bringing in have been substantially higher percentage-wise on the peeler end of it than the crushers. And that comes from the plant health care that it gives to the, to the tomato itself, and it, it keeps the tomatoes longer in the field. And that's interesting because um, I, so Scott has taught me just about everything that I know about processing tomatoes. And um, one of the first most important things that you were emphasizing to me is how, how, in, how insignificant it is when uh, your fields or the, your contracted grower fields can deliver peelers. Peelers, peeling tomatoes where they can do whole peeled, they can go anywhere in the plant. 
Um, and so they they can fill cans as whole peeled. They can be chunked. They can be made into anything else. The problem with fruit that can't be peeled well is they immediately end up having to go for some other use. And that really ties your hands for managing as stuff comes into the plant. Am I did I did I summarize that well? You're 100 percent correct. Yeah, it's I find it fascinating watching this processing. All right, Scott, we're going to do one last question and then we're going to get back into the other parts of this webinar. Um, do you see any big changes for your 2024 season? And I appreciate your order recently. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I've actually it's, it's one of my growers. I think I, I don't know if I mentioned this to you, but one of my growers that I've had for 15 years has seen the the benefits on the tomato plant that we've been growing he's actually started utilizing on agronomic crops and seeing the health his his health on his, on his corn and beans and started using it on that and and he see, he saw some major impact in there so we're just going to keep you know tweaking our program as we can and uh no it's been a been a great uh you know, thing for us. So thank you. Thank you, Scott. Hey, I repeat, I appreciate your comments very much. Um, if you, if you could stay on as long as you would like, and if you want to add anything to any of my comments during the rest of it, or take any questions, please. And, and did I see a question come in? There is a, there is a question. So from Fred, um, he's asking, Scott, are you applying regalia in the greenhouse with the boom irrigators? Yes, we are. It's a, uh... We put them in the in the germinator germination uh, chambers. And when they come up, I think we have about three applications because once every two weeks, it takes about six weeks in the, in the greenhouse to get a uh, tomato plant out to us ready to to put in the ground. So we're we're putting about three applications, and I really you really get your bang for your buck doing that because you know a seventy acre greenhouse, I'm putting we're putting. 9,000 to 10,000 plants per acre and I can I can I can get that regalia in those little tiny cells we're using 288s and 338 cell trays and to get that regalia in you know a million two million three million plants at a very you know very cost very cost effective you know rate is it's, it's great so yes we are using they are using when they're watering they're drenching it within the water system with their, their docetrons early and often best way to use it all right scott thank you very much and let's get let's get into some more of this webinar um so first off i want to share a little bit of philosophy that i have um, this is what comes as you get older you get really philosophical and um one of the big things that I look for now is what is the yield potential of what you've got to work with. And so I've been working with Scott and Fermano's growers for a long time. And, um, you know, one of the kind of the, uh, the the golden number is looking for 50 tons to the acre. And so I consider everything less than that is what we were chasing. And you have this loss of yield. And so that's where we try and go. And it's obviously it's different for slicing tomatoes or high tunnel tomatoes. But what it requires is that you have to stay ahead of it. You can't be reactive. Um, I love old school IPM. It was a great way to reduce our dependency on a lot of chemicals. But um, it, the, the problem is, is that you're looking at problems when they're happening and you have to prevent them. Part of the reason that uh, Fermanos uses regalia early and often, and we recommend it that way, is that you're trying to prevent diseases from getting in the field keep your plants healthy keep them ready to do it to grow on and it's this is all about details using great plants feeding them well and managing diseases and pests proactively um i scott had mentioned the weather here in the northeast it's humid it's hot all summer long uh, the tomatoes seem to thrive in it but so does every disease and insect as well and i would submit that just about every area you grow tomatoes in or peppers you're going to find something that meets those challenges so the idea is get these obstacles out of the way. Um, so I want to get into heat stress. We've mentioned Haven a little bit. It may be unfamiliar to a lot of people. It is a uh, coconut oil extract. And what we see is it's the mode of action that makes the really big difference with Haven. Um, it's a clear product. 
unlike uh, most of the uh, heat stress products or sun scald prevention products that are white, um, they're they're typically going to be a calcium based product. Uh, Haven is clear; it works metabo metabolically, and so the way it works is um, it helps to protect the plant. The re plant reflects more UV rays, which obviously is going to keep the plant from getting quite so hot. And what I find most fascinating it is it increases transpiration in the plant, so that's going to cool the plant down by evapotranspiration. And the side effect that is from that is so these are these are common problems you see on tomatoes starting from your left that's blossom end rot which as most tomato growers know does not need to occur on the blossom end peppers get it equally bad um, you'll see in the middle there you can see a combination of yellow shoulder and cracking um, or or just discolored fruit uh, that's a typically a potash deficiency and then radial um, cracking on the right so all of these deficiencies are a, a lack of calcium a lack of potash a lack of magnesium or having them imbalanced um, Early on in the plant, all these problems usually set in around the time that the fruit is set. So 35 days before ripeness, the idea is to avoid all of them uh, by putting uh, haven, combinations of haven and regalia out there. You increase this transpiration in the plant so it moves more calcium um, and you can have a, if, as long as you've got the nutrients there, it can have a really big impact on preventing them. Where I really like them is uh, when the, when the season is super hot, Haven makes all, a lot of sense, but even early and late in the season when we're not moving so much water, calcium does not move well in the irrigation solution up into the plant. And so by uh, using Haven, what you'll see is you get this increase in transpiration that's going to pull these nutrients along and we see significant reductions. And I'll show you some of those numbers in a moment in some of these related problems and a decrease in culls and an increase in harvestable yield. So uh, this is a little more on Haven. And so this is some work that uh, Jerry Bruss did from University of Maryland in 2020. Um, this variety was Celebrity. You can see here the reduction in yield. I mean, the reduction in culls shouldn't, that, that was terrible, reduction in culls. Um, the dark blue is Haven um, and much significantly less culls. You know, culls are a pain for a lot of reasons. You have to still have to pick them off of your tomatoes. You got to get them out of there. And so just by reducing the amount of labor you have for that, but also the, the other side of that, of course, is increased yields. Um, and so Haven alone did this um, compared to the rest of the program. And um, here we have this increase in marketable yield. This is still celebrity. And these are um, these are in high tunnels. So you can see a significant increase all the way across both early, middle, and later in the season. And I want to point out the later line for a moment. Um, this is one of those times that as the tomatoes get older um, in high tunnels, when they've been picked hard and worked hard all season long, the plants just generally get beat up. And you can see it as you see this uh, increase in culls and decrease in marketable yield. Haven is one of those ways to hold on to that. We typically apply it every two weeks at a 0.6% volume to volume. So that's about 77 ounces per 100 gallons of spray. We've mixed it with most everything so far. And now I'm going to cover myself and Pro Farm. Please do a jar test. If you're going to try something new that you've never tried before, um, you can always contact me. I'll let you know if we've tried it. But uh, do a jar test. Make sure everything mixes well before you go putting it out. So this is the same trawl. This is a different variety, just so you can see the significance here that it's, this is across multiple varieties. And this is Mountain Gem. The first variety was Celebrity. And then, so this is um, the trawl that I mentioned. This was the first time that uh, Scott and I had worked together on a field. And this is um, Northumberland, Pennsylvania, not far from the plant. Um, as I remember, this was a 67 acre uh, tomato field. And uh, Scott had divided the field in half. One half got Haven for, I believe, two applications, if I remember from the results you shared with me, the other did not. And you could, you could see just looking at the field how much more fruit there is. And so we had 10 more tons to the acre. I don't always expect to see that kind of result, um, but this it's it's just not it's it's not unusual, um, especially when you have a stressful season. 
So regalia, um, regalia is the is the product that Marone, before we became Pro Farm, was built on. I believe the product's been around since about two thousand eight. Um, it uh, it works by turning on plants defense systems. That is its primary way of, of uh, primary mode of action. Both the ISR and SAR system. You will always almost always see an increase in marketable yield. Um, 31% is high, but 20, 25% is not unusual. Uh, regularly applied, it'll re it'll reduce fusarium and quite a number of other diseases as well. It's generally really tank mix friendly, um, but there are a couple things that you want to avoid. Potassium silicate products and potassium bicarbonates are very high pH. If you're in hard water, stay away from a tank mix with regalia. You'll get a, not a jello type gelling in the tank, but you'll see the water looks a little thick. It doesn't spray very well. Other than that, um, I've used it in a vast number of tank mixes. Um, and the most common one that we do here um, in the Northeast is uh, Mancozeb or, or Manze plus regalia plus copper. That's just a solid tank mix you can use as a preventative. And what I like about it is it gives us a high degree of control of most fungal diseases. And it's probably about the best program for bacterial diseases. And it avoids, avoids the really long PHI of a couple of the other synthetic products. And it does a really nice job. Uh, I think everything else on here we've been covering. So this is a trial I did with Scott um, at Fermano's in one of their fields this past season. And uh, Scott was nice enough to leave the regalia out of the transplant water for 10 rows across an 80 plus acre field. I came in at four and a half weeks. We had had no, no rain whatsoever since transplanting. Uh, what you'll see on the plant on the left that didn't have any regalia is the roots are about four, four and a half inches long. And when you got down to five inches, the soil was incredibly dry. Again, no rain. The regalia transplants, which was most of the field, um, you got you hit moist soil at about five inches, and you can see that those roots were really taking advantage of that. Plus, the top of the plants reflected that same kind of growth. I, I would have liked to have followed up on yield, uh, but uh, while the weather here was very, very dry last season, that lasted right up until Scott tried to harvest that field. I think it started pouring like three days before you started to get into that field. You are correct. Yeah, so we 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 missed out on that data, but you can see um, this is part of that preservation of yield. That's where we're, this is avoiding yield loss early in the season. And so what is regalia? This is a plant extract, Rhinotria sacculinensis. You can apply it uh, foliar, airily. Um, you can do it as drenched through chemgation. One caution, um, foliar application where it works much better um, for preventing foliar diseases and fruit rots where chemgation or applying it as a drench to the soil works much better on preventing soil diseases. Uh, we see a little bit of crossing of that barrier, but in general, general, it's a more localized activity. The rate is one to four quarts to the acre. Uh, most specialty growers are applying it at two quarts to the acre. Um, I know Scott often applies it at one quart, and I've heard from a, lo a lot of growers that um, instead of the two quart rate every seven to 14 days, they're just doing one quart every time they apply. So there's a lot of ways in getting around that. It's got it. This is a proactive product. You've got to have it out there. Um, and again, going back to what Scott was saying earlier, you've got to have it out there before you see disease. It works by primarily by turning on plants defense systems. And so it is a defensive product, a formidable one, but it's a defensive product. Uh, we've talked about all this. Oh, the water pH. Your spray mixture should be between six and eight. And you do not need any adjuvants with regalia. Um, it uh, binds to the plant fairly quickly. Actually, it's rain fast in an hour. But if you are applying it as a tank mix, unless other products in there have surfactants that are going to um, both spread and keep them adhered, a spreader sticker, um, you want to put an adjuvant in. We've had we've done lots of experiments with uh, regalia mixes where we've done things like uh, New Film P, Oro Boost, and related products. 
So this is the this is the official modes of action. I'm just going to put all these up at once. So um, this is the uh, regalia inhibits pathogen growth by triggering the SAR ISR pathways. If you're not familiar with these, um, when I first came into uh, Marone six and a half years ago, I was given a few uh, interesting scientific papers on that, and I will gladly share them with you. All you have to do is send me an email. I still find them fascinating. They're they're kind of hard reading, but they give you a really good description into what we're talking about with this um, ISAR, ISR pathways. They also strengthen cell walls. We'll see the increased deposition of lignans and suberins. That obviously is going to prevent um, uh, diseases from penetrating. And because it increases photosynthesis, you'll almost always see a greening effect in the field. This is where the yield enhancement comes from. Uh, one of the common synthetic products that we use for bacterial disease management, you'll often hear them talk about a yield lag. This is one of the reasons that I think regalia is often superior to it, because you avoid that yield lag. In fact, for most crops, we will see a relatively significant increase in yield. So there's a few a few um, data slides to get through this so you can understand that we we've looked at regalia in a lot of ways. So this is presenting fusarium on tomatoes in California in 2018. Um, and you can see the untreated control had quite a bit of fusarium. Uh, Preaxor did a decent job, uh, certainly a significant job in reducing some, but regalia alone does a really knockout job on fusarium. So the, this is the first point during this program that you get to win one of the knives. And the first person who puts in a chat what this disease is, and yes, that is a tomato, um, I get to send one of the knives to. So I'll give you guys about 10 or 15 seconds, and I'm looking for the chat to come alive. Oh, there we go. Michael, congratulations. Um, let me, I'm going to respond to you. Um, let's see. I'm just going to put my email back to you and just send me your mailing address and I will get that to you. And then Steve, while we're paused here, there is a quick question in the Q&A. Um, have you done any sun scald work with watermelons? Yes, we have. As a matter of fact, uh, Haven does a really nice job preventing sun scald on watermelons. It's two to three applications, um, again, at that 77 ounces per 100 gallon rate, which is the lowest of the recommended rates. And you would start applying that as soon as the fruit begin to develop. Unlike the, the white color, the white sprays that you spray on to prevent sun scald, um, which will work immediately. Remember, this, this product works metabolically. It's got to be on 48 hours before the, uh, we'll call it the event, the sun scald event. And so um, what I recommend is just from the time you can actually identify fruit is forming, 77 ounces per 100 gallons every two weeks. And you'll have you will see a significant reduction in the in in sun scald on melons in general. We've seen it on musk melons slash cantaloupes, watermelon. Um, I would I suspect you would see it on honeydews as well. Good question. Thanks. Oh, so qu another question on 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 bell peppers. Oh yeah, this is uh, bell peppers. They are they are the poster child for Haven. Um, and again, the same thing, but you're applying it every two weeks. That's it's got to be the 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 place that folks mess up is sometimes they'll hear an event's going to happen tomorrow. That's not that's not a, a product that Haven's going to. It's not a uh, an event that Haven's going to have a big impact on. It's got to be at least forty eight hours ahead of the event. And so you know. We, our summers are getting hotter. This is an ideal product that matches our hotter summers. You just do it every two weeks. Because it also improves fruit quality, it's a win-win. And I'm sorry I said win-win. I'm trying to stop saying those cliches. So here we go again. And Michael, I'm sorry, you're not going to get two knives, so you're going to sit this one out. Um, what disease are we looking at here? Everybody's being shy at this point. 
Well, Angela, I'm going to let you manage the chat so I can keep on moving. So I'm Sounds going to. Good. Oh, there we go. Fred, you got it. This is bacterial spot on tomatoes. So let me respond to Fred just a moment. And Fred, the same thing. Just send your email. Send your mailing address to me. And I will send you a knife. Okay, so we have spec and spot. Let's get back into the meat of this thing. Um, so we were talking about bacterial spot. This is one of those places that uh, regalia really shines out. And this is, you'll see on the right of this one, this is out of Florida. Um, and this is regalia plus Nordox, one of the coppers. This is at one and a quarter pounds. And I, I don't remember from this one why Coside was used um, in most of this trial and Nordox in the other, but uh, regalia and copper. And we have mixed it with um, badge, co-side, uh, just about all of them. Um, it mixes really well with copper. I think um, I've been warned not to use the word synergy, but you can definitely see a strong additive effect. And um, if you're in the part of the season where you can still use Mancozeb, where that five-day PHI is not a problem, the combination of the three of them is amazing. Even in high tunnels, um, because man you can't use chlorothalonil indoors, Mancozeb you can you can use indoors safely, but remember you've got a five day PHI when you add that into the mix. Oh, uh, and so yeah, I'm not surprised. So Fred, I'm not sure where you're where, for the comment from Fred is copper does nothing. Uh, I'm not surprised. Um, we know that copper's failed in a lot of areas. Um, and so, yeah, up here, copper still makes a big difference in, in most of the Northeast. I suspect you are in the South if you're saying that. Um, you can see here that we'll often see an increased yield. And we've talked about this um, mixing of regalia with other products. So you can see the tons per acre of regalia is uh, is comparable to with just a slight improvement over Preaxor, but the two of them together, there is a definite additive effect. So Stargus, we have a, Stargus is probably one of our lesser known products, and this is a Bacillus amyloliquefaciens strain. Um, I, where, where regalia works primarily by turning on plants defense system. Stargus it also does some of that, not to the extent that regalia does, uh, but uh, the, the, the fermentation products that are in Stargus, the peptides actually coat the plant, and then you'll get some colonization, especially in the soil. So the typical, the label rate is one to four quarts. Um, it says here two quarts. I, I find that on tomatoes and peppers, you're really looking at three quarts. And I use two quarts when tank mix. And one of the notes I made to myself earlier, I want to catch up where I am with all the notes I've been I've made ahead of this. Um, one of the common things that you, you can do with uh, Stargus is tank mix it with, with regalia. Um, and we, we know this because a bunch of the pathologists here in the Northeast have actually played around with this mix. Often we're using three quarts of Stargus plus two quarts of regalia. Or if you're interested in following up on this, we have an actual recipe that we've been using on the research side, and I can share that with you. Um, Haven is a, a relatively stable product. It's got two years of shelf life, but this is all about the peptides that are made in fermentation that these bacteria make. And although it is a bacillus amyloliquefaciens, it's a very unusual strain. Uh, what I find is that with most of the bacillus subtilis and amyloliquefaciens, they, they are a booster for powdery mildew control and a few other diseases. Haven is really significant in that it'll prevent, um, it actually does a really nice job of preventing white mold, sclerotinia, timber rot, all same disease, three different names, uh, fusarium, uh, certain leaf spots, downy mildew. It's a very, very different kind of a product. 
So it's these peptides that that this is this is why we ferment these. But Haven is is sold alive, and so you've got these live spores that'll colonize plant surface. It's a even though it is a rhizobacteria, it's a really robust rhizobacteria. So it they'll actually persist um, even on leaves, uh, uh, obviously leaves above the ground, even on above ground parts with high UV radiation. Um, surprisingly enough, Stargus will persist there and colonize there. But where I really like it is when it's used in the soil. It does a fabulous job of managing Phytophthora, Rhizoctonia. Yeah, Phytophthora. I mean, we've got some data to support that. And um, um, Fusarium. And a question here, would Haven be beneficial on pumpkins? Uh, I don't know that we've ever trialed it on pumpkins. But if you are seeing sun scald problems on pumpkins, I suspect if you used Haven regularly, you would see significantly less. And I've, I mean, I've seen sun scald on pumpkins before. If that's a problem you're having, um, get with me. If it's, if you're in my area, I'll set up a demo with you. If not, I'll hook you up with the, the TSM, your territory sales manager, and you can do some kind of a demo with them. We would love, we love seeing our products trialed. So this is it. This is Stargus versus Fusarium and uh, truly significant control. We have a lot of experience, uh, both research experience, but also demos with growers on managing uh, Fusarium with Stargus. It's really effective. This is all about timing. If you know you're in a field where you see a lot of Fusarium, use it early. The idea is stay ahead. Once plants are infected with Fusarium, there's not much you can do. Uh, so the idea is get in there early. And you can see the rate's very low. This is one quart per acre. Yes, Fred, the answer is yes. Um, for soil-borne diseases, you want to do chemgation. Put the product where it needs to be. So let's get into insect and mite management for a few minutes. I don't even know where we are. On, oh, we're still in good shape on time. So we've got our Grandivo WDG insecticide. It's a water dispersible granule. And just in case you've used any of our older version of Grandivo, which we phased out about six years ago, it was a dry flowable. This water dispersible granule is a pleasure to use. It dissolves very, very quickly. Um, it's also very tank mix friendly. And so this is a this is not a living product, although it is a biological and it's brewed from a chromobacterium satsugai strain. What you have is not alive. It's the products that were made in fermentation that do all the actual work. So you, it's got a long shelf life. It's got a three-year-plus shelf life. Um, hey, Grandivo is unusual in that you'll see significant repellency. Um, I have seen Japanese beetles repelled for two days after spraying the stuff. Third day, not so much, but it'll actually keep them off for a couple days. Um, it works by gut disruption. So if you, this is a, um, and this is, it, it's a very, very different biological pathway than you'll see with BT or our other product Haven, but it is still a gut disruptor. It'll reduce egg laying, uh, egg hatching, fecundity, but we often will see that um, aphids, white flies, spider mites will stop feeding in seconds. They just don't like to feed on there. A relatively broad range, it'll get young caterpillars. Um, it won't get after about, uh, once they get to about third instar, it's not going to do very much. Then you'll need to add something else in to get the larger caterpillars. But if you're running a proactive program, it's not a problem. What I see it really effective on with Venerate is we're talking control of aphids, white flies, spider mites, mealybugs, um, broad mites, and uh, I forget what I must have missed in there. Oh, western flower thrips as well. Very low impact on beneficials. Um, it's relatively safe to use around them. You, you, you need to keep that in mind when you're making applications. Um, if you're running a beneficial program, let's talk about timings. The rate is one to three pounds and uh, with different, generally it's a two pound rate, but if you're managing spotted wing Drosophila, for some reason, you're gonna use the three pound rate. Again, really easy to mix um, four to 10 day intervals. If you don't see any pests, and you're using it as a proactive product, and we'll get into that at the very end, stay at the longer interval. Once you spot a pest, then it's time to reduce the interval until you get control. 
my feeling on on insects like western flower thrips is by the time you've scouted for the first one you've probably missed a bunch of them they're they're relatively small hard to spot for and so um, by by running this in the background as a regular application you can keep them at low enough populations and you can see all the rest of their mr and l exempt four hour rei zero phi et cetera et cetera these the, all these products we've talked about so far except haven are omri listed and haven is it's not because it's it, the problem obviously is not from the coconut extract it is the process that goes into making it other things that are added so this is the list of uh beneficials that we've actually tested grandivo against um, and have had minimal to no effect uh, we do see a little bit of a reduction in fecundity um that but it's it's it is minimal and these are some of our most important predators venerates our other insecticide um, and this is also a non-living product this is burkholderia rhinogensis um, and so this is this product's been around for seven or eight years now very very similar profile um, to grandivo they each have their kind of strengths and weaknesses i like to use them in a rotation program because generally when we're growing tomatoes and peppers we often have just this pest complex we get we get aphids we get spider mites and by rotating them and using excuse me using them in programs you'll see that you can get really strong control the label allows up to eight quarts generally we are applying two or three quarts for most pests um, the mode of action is very similar it's a different uh, gut destroyer uh, but it definitely one of the un, really unusual things that you'll see is this feeding interference with venerate um, and this is how we've gotten control of brown marmorated stink bug uh, did some work originally with Cornell Peter Jens at Cornell at the Hudson Valley lab where he uh, sprayed apples both outdoors and in his lab with venerate and uh, then took a stink bug and put it into a Dixie cup and attached it to the apple it's a really interesting study and even after seven days wherever um, wherever venerate was applied the stink bugs had not stung the apples at all um so there's a question here. Grandiva has a warning about forage, foraging bees, and that's because of the repellency part of it. Um, it's not going to hurt the bees, but there is some repellency. And obviously, when you've got bees that are uh, that are um, doing, uh, they're, they're pollinating, the last thing you want to do is repel them from the flowers. I would focus more on venerate during that period. I think it makes a lot more sense. This is just a, using the right tool at the right time. Uh, but Venerate does a really good job of preventing stink bug stinks. Very, very low mortality, almost zero. But uh, you know the purpose here is not to kill stink bugs. It's to keep them from stinging our fruit. So it does a really nice job at that. Um, also does a pretty good job on uh, lepidopterans, on caterpillars. Very comparable to BTs. So that early, those early instar controls. This is probably a little better product for that, getting you out to third instar. Uh, it's all the same kind of stuff that we were talking about for Grandivo before MRL exempt and et cetera, et cetera. It's got a three year shelf life to it. So now we get to our next question and I'm going to check this. So name the insect vector. And for those two, Michael and Fred, you guys, you guys I mean, you're welcome to name it, but oh, it, stink bug. That's close, Crystal, but unfortunately, you have to try again. It's a good guess, though. And I kind of gave it away because this is a vector. Stink bugs just do damage, at least far as I've seen, but this one's a vector. I actually got to one of Scott's cooperators. Um, in the Chambersburg, Pennsylvania areas where I saw this strike. You got thrips. We're getting there. Thrips. Thrips. Fernando. Fernando is our winner. He beat Trent by probably seconds. Um, and so I'm going to send a message to Fernando with my information.
This is thrips, and obviously what we're looking at here is that we have virus transmission. And then, now this, this one I will tell you up front because we're a small crowd. This one's kind of a trick question, is what's causing this? And I will accept more than one answer on this because there's actually, you can see two pests. Fernando, if they'll let me ship it to you, I'll mail it there, but whatever you want. It's up to you guys. You figure that one out. Mites, that is correct. This is both this is both mites and thrips. This this was heavily infested. And this is this is what happens when the uh when your tomatoes are long in the season. So mites is the better answer here. And let me respond to Gary real quick. And so, yeah, this is pretty bad mite damage. You sh I, I, sh I should have put a picture of what this house looked like in there. This was almost cheating to find this one because there was actual webbing in the house. Um, the grower had fallen far behind. So this is some of the uh, data that we have. I, I, just, I try and keep the data minimal, but I know you guys like to see some of that. Uh, and this is uh, Venerate for the control of thrips. And you can see here that it does a nice job on its own. Um, the, the problem I have, and, and we'll get into this in just a minute, is you can see Venerate does a significant job against an untreated check for controlling thrips. Uh, I I don't like thrips at all, especially on tomatoes and peppers. The damage they do is so significant, and that's going to color where we're going next with how I like to control them. Um, again, venerate against an untreated check. It does a really nice job. I would never put venerate at it one quart. It's a two quart plus product and probably would have seen a better bit of control. And here it is. You can see venerate compared to corrigin alone on the right. And then that tank mix of corrigin and venerate. Um, and that is a definite level of significance improvement there. Improved lepidoptering control as well. Corrigin does a pretty good job. Venerate's also a really good product for managing young instar caterpillars. So um, the story behind this, uh, I, was, I, I do a lot of teaching at the Mid-Atlantic Fruit and Vegetable Conference in Hershey, Pennsylvania. And a few years ago, actually going back eight or nine now, um, a greenhouse grower was challenging me. Uh, and the, the, the statement was, is we've lost We've completely lost control of Western flower thrips in our greenhouses. You've been working with these biologicals. I was still with Penn State then. You come up with a program that's going to that let us use bios and get good control. And so um, this has been developed over a number of years. And so just a, the way that this runs is you're alternating between Grandivo and Venerate. Um, if you're not seeing any pest and you're just doing it to make sure that you're not missing anything, your interval may be 10 days apart. You're always tank mixing it, with, however, and that's why the web of, of arrows in the bottom, you're always tank mixing it with one of the products in the bottom row. So, for example, today, you might start off your program using Grandivo, but you would tank mix it with an insectal, insecticidal soap like MP, Desex, or Copa. I don't recommend one over the others. They're all very similar potassium salts. But you might mix Grandiva with an insecticidal soap, and I would probably do that at a 2% solution, and all the soap labels will, will help you out with that. Then the next time, and if you're not seeing any pest, you're still just running a maintenance program, you'll use Venerate and pick another one of the tank mix partners that you'll see in the bottom row. So you'll see these are the Azadiractins, Azadirect, Azagard, Nemix, or Moltex. There are more. Uh, remember with the Azadiractins is that the 
product has to be fresh. Uh, Aza, Aza Directin has a one-year shelf life. And when I hear folks tell me that their Aza product has failed often because they're trying to use up last year's product, which may be a year and a half old at that point. So Aza's have a one-year shelf life. Or I'm going to mix it with a Bavaria Bassiani product. I've mentioned Botanigard here. There are others on the market. That's just an example. Um, or an Isaria product. This is probably one of the lesser known. So Bavaria is a fungus. Isaria is a fungus. Um, the two brands that I know are PFR97 and Ancora. And so this is, again, these are alternatives for this tank mix. And then on the far right, you'll see Metarizium. Uh, Lalaman now has the uh, uh, the rights to sell the uh, Met 52 or Metarizium product. And um, so you'll have to check with them. I forget the exact name of their product, but it was it was most recently sold as Met 52. And the idea here is so the first time you apply Grandivo with one of them, you next come you come back with Venerate with another. This gives you two things. It gives you a high level of control of uh, resistance. So you're going to manage resistance simply because you're just putting out so many modes of action. It's really hard for even Western flower thrips, which I think is the poster child for resistance uh, to get ahead of it. Um, and you're also increasing the level of control. The problem with both the products on the top and bottom is they'll get you to about 70 or 80% control by themselves. Together, they get you to that 98, 99% control. Then if you see an infestation is building up, so you're scouting your crop and this is indoor or out, and you notice that things have, things have changed. They've moved toward where you can actually identify populations building up, you simply collapse the interval between them. So your interval may go down to three to five days for a handful of applications. I would say three typically until you get control of that. And then once you know you've got control, again, you adjust your interval. So most of your management is going to be picking the tank mixes that you want to use and then adjusting the interval. For most growers, they're going to use Grandivo and Venerate and then pick three of the products from the bottom row. I'm a big fan of the insecticidal soaps as one of them. Um, I like the fact that they give you a uh, uh, they, they give you a uh, surfactant activity at the same time, and it's a nice physical control. Very, very difficult for the pests we've been talking about to develop resistance to this. And then all the others are various levels of chemical control. And uh, if you want to, we can talk about how they'll fit into your operation. Most of the growers that I work with are using Grandivo and Venerate, and then they're using insecticidal soap and an azadiractin and either Bavaria or Isaria. You do not need to use all seven. Um, at least I've never seen anybody that needed to use all, all seven. So this next slide, and I can share these with you if you send me an email. I've got these uh, as a printed document. You'll see the same thing we were looking at before, but in the left, you'll see pyrethrums or pyrethroids and trust or radiant, our spinosad products. And on the right, you'll see the bacillus thuringiensis product. Use those as occasional boosters. So you go into your high tunnel, you go into your uh, tomato or pepper field, and you see that uh, green peach aphids have reached a, a level where you're not tolerating them any, anymore. One of the things we know about aphids is they will develop resistance to pyrethroids relatively quickly. But for that single application of, say, Grandivo plus azadiractin plus a pyrethroid, you'll get a rapid knockdown, and then this program is able to, to take it from there. And very similar for thrips, you can use in trust or radiant spinosad chemistry. Again, we know that we're going to see a uh, rapid buildup of resistance to thrips, but generally for one or two applications, you'll see efficacy. The idea is that you're holding on to those really important knockdown products for when you need them and not exhausting them when this kind of a program is going to do a nice job in the background. I've got hundreds of growers here in the North Northeast that have adopted this, and they keep telling me the same thing, how well this works, and you just need to manage the interval in the program. 
And that gets to us to the end of this. So this is your opportunity before we wrap this up. Well, I can't believe I got so close to the right time. Um, if you have any questions for Scott or myself, this is your opportunity to raise your hand um, before we close this out for the day. Shelf life of regalia. Fred, that's a great question. So the official guaranteed shelf life of regalia is three years. Um, we obviously keep sample batches of our products. We've tested regalia out to as far as five years and have found no reduction in activity. Um, so I... Five years I'm comfortable with, but we guarantee it for three. I'm using some here at home from a, some a product that I picked up that's six years old, and I can still see that it's greening up the products. Officially, Grandivo and Venerate are three-year shelf life, and Stargus is two years. But if you have any concerns, if anybody has any concerns, if they have any product and they want to know um, how old that product is or on the positive side, how fresh it is, just contact me. I will gladly just get me the lot number and I can tell you where that when that product was made. Excellent. Any final questions for um, Steve or our guest speaker, Scott? Love the engagement throughout the webinar. Lots of questions, lots of dialogue. Thank you all for joining us today and participating in the webinar. Steve and Scott, thank you so much for sharing your expertise. I really appreciate it. I'll hang around for just a few more minutes in case there are any last minute questions. Otherwise, um, you obviously have Steve's email and phone number right here. He's a great resource for you. And of course, you can visit www.profarmgroup.com. And if you click on talk to an expert, you'll see the rest of our, uh, our team who's you know, very familiar with a variety of crops and of course, how our products work with the crops. And um, there, we have a team located throughout the country. So if Steve can't help you or Steve isn't local to you, please reach out to a representative that's in your area. They'll probably be the best resource for you in regards to the right product for your crop. Yeah, whoever had asked about the um, melons, if if you're in the if you're in the U.S., just contact me and I'll connect you. If I'm, if I'm not your person, I'll connect you with your territory sales manager who can set up a demo for you. I think it's worthwhile looking at, and certainly if you're in my area, I will gladly get that going for you. Awesome, thank you so much, Steve. Thanks again, Steve and Scott, and thank you all for joining us. I hope to see you on a future webinar. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you, Angela. You're welcome.